Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on advanced keying techniques as requested. So let's jump right into color effects. I have this shot and I would like to create a super nice key for the sky here. So the first thing I'll do is add a version and now use the upper version of the two to create my key in the first place. So for that let's create a layer, I've got a qualifier speak here and select well, a good selection of the sky something like this now as you can see if I grab too much hue I also get things from the foreground into the key which I don't want so let's maybe leave it about here that looks good if I switch on the alpha view here I can see the key that looks up until now and now let's refine that key. So for that I'll create yet another layer. Select the HSV key here again and now select the middle part here. Something like this. And try to grab as much of the less saturated middle part. Something like this little bit wider. Yeah, this actually works pretty well. Okay, and if I now look at the alpha, yeah I'm getting a good portion out of the sky. This was it before, this is with the other layer. That's not too bad. Maybe we can do something here on these gray areas. Try and get some more of these. Yeah, not too much. I don't want to get too much of the foreground into it. Yeah, so maybe let's leave it at that. Disable alpha view. Create yet another layer. Select RHSV key and now try to key this section right here in the middle, which is about here. So I'm going to select that. Widen the selection a little. Okay, that looks good. Now, try to remove as much of the foreground as possible. Okay, this seems to work. So if we now look at our three keys, this is the first one, the second one adds to it, and the third one adds a little bit more. Now what we can also see is that the, um, the fence here on the side also gets keyed in, which yeah, we might not really want. So let's try to get that key. Uh, let's try to get this uh, this fence back a little. So I'll create a third layer and now choose the luminance key and pick our fence here. Just the key and now let's figure it out. Yeah, this actually looks looks pretty good. However, as you can imagine, uh, by the way, remember to disable show mat before you switch on the alpha view. Because as long as show mat is active, it will only show you the mat of the currently selected layer. So turn that off. But as you can see, now we're adding this key that we made to actually keep the fence unkeyed. We're adding this key to our other keys on the other layers. Now for this, switch to the mat tab up here and in in this tab you can basically tell scratch uh, which layers should be considered to make up uh, the shots overall alpha and right now we're just uh, combining all the alphas together which looks like this but I can also tell layer 4 for instance to please subtract from the alpha and then it looks like this if I disable this layer, I still have the fence keyed with everything, and if I enable it, it gets abstracted. And also, good amount of other stuff here in the foreground, which is pretty good. And if I have a layer that is just going all over the frame, 
for whatever reason, uh, that obviously messes up my alpha. Then I can also tell this layer to please not be considered for the shot's alpha at all. Okay, now let's assume we have created our perfect alpha or perfect key for the sky and the sea here. Let's go to our untouched shot. Now this is the shot we actually want to put some grading on. So let's start by adding a layer, go back to this view and maybe make it a little bit darker, uh, something like this. Maybe increase the saturation a little bit. Okay, let's assume this is our grade and now we want to take care of the sky and the sea. So we create a new layer, go to the film mod menu and now grab our pre-made alpha clip here and drop it down here into the mat field. Okay, as you can see, Scratch selects the mat field. Basically the tab here and the two fields here are directly linked. So the upper field is the front field and the lower field is the mat field. Now what we have to do is first enable the grade. So all the layers that we created on our alpha clip here uh, are being considered and then enable alpha. That's what we want. And if we now go ahead and grade the image on this layer, as you can see, we're only really affecting stuff that's within our alpha. So I can now make this a little bit darker, can increase the saturation, maybe add some S-curve contrast to it, and make the whole thing a little bit more blue. Now, before we continue, we can of course also influence the alpha coming from our alpha shot right here on layer 2. For instance, we can limit the alpha with our canvas. Let me enter alpha view real quick and show you how to do that. Because if you just grab, let's say, the right side here and move it over, as you can see, you're actually squeezing the alpha, not cropping it. Why is that? The answer is in the film map menu. First, make sure the mat field or tab is selected and then look at this drop down. Right now it says map on canvas, which means exactly that. The texture is mapped onto the canvas. However, I can switch this to projected. And if I now change the canvas, the alpha stays right where it is and gets cropped. We can still offset it, scale it, blur it, and even invert it using the tools here in the Film Map menu. Another tool to consider generally with qualifiers, shapes and keys of any kind is the Alpha Curve in the Curves menu. You can use this curve anytime there is an alpha on your layer and refine its luminance with that. This helps especially with transparencies and gradients in the alpha. Anyhow, let's assume I found that my pre-made key needs some adjustment and I have to do that on my alpha clip. I could make these changes here on the alpha clip, but after having made these changes on the alpha clip, I would need to go back to the clip I'm grading, select layer two, go to fill mod, and now replace the old alpha clip in the mat field with the modified one. Pretty unelegant. You can actually completely get rid of that clip now that it is part of our composite on the shot we are grading, and we will find it in our node tree. And in here, same as everywhere in Scratch, with space drag you can move, with alt drag you can zoom in. And as you can see, we now have here layer two and the shot that's being fed into layer two, which is our alpha clip. The view of the node tray here, you can set that up here in the gear menu where it says layers and schematic. So you can tell Scratch to show all layers. I also have layer one here. And as you can see, I can select layer one in here and it gets selected in the layer stack as well, or layer two, or I can do the same in the layer stack. So this view is, these two views are really talking to each other. Or alternatively, I can tell it to only show layers that have an actual fill, like layer two. In this case, layer one only has a grade on it, or which is what I usually do, no layers at all. So I use the node tree to navigate nodes and the layer stack to navigate the layers on any node I've selected in the node tree. So now when I select the fill, this node here in the node tree can enable the alpha view again and then, well, let's
let's say I can create another layer and draw a shape around something that I might want to add to our key, something like this. And once done, I can go back to my overall shot. I might have to uh, move a frame forward and backward to update the viewport, okay? And now uh, this portion is actually included in the alpha. Oops, disable layer one because that is going over the full frame. And now I can see that alpha here on layer two. Now two more things about working with the node tree since we're at it. When working with the node tree, there are scenarios where you might want to work on a specific node, like our alpha node here, but actually look at the overall composite. There's two ways to achieve this. One, select the top level node. Here everything comes together, the grade and the alpha and everything else. Hit the lock icon over here to lock the viewport to always show the currently selected node, which is the top level node. Now I can select the underlying alpha node and work on that whilst viewing the full composite. However, especially when pulling keys or adjusting a canvas and such, that is not always the best way to go. So here's the alternative. First, let me disable the lock icon again and then jump into dual view. Disable the link button to position both views individually. And now the right view will always show the full composite the left view will always show the currently selected node in the node tree. This way I can conveniently work on any given node in as much detail as I want and simultaneously watch the full composite result on the right. Okay, um, I hope that's clear so far. Hope this was helpful and let me know if you have questions. Bye!